Colonel Douglas, we both did several combat tours in the Middle East, fighting against more or less the same enemies. What concerns you more, sir? The increased terrorist encounters at our southern border or domestic terrorism? I, I, increased terrorist encounters in general, sir. Uh, I mean, you know, it, I, it, yeah, terrorism in general concerns me. Yeah, um, I guess what I'm driving at, sir, is when, when, you, when we hear our colleagues on the other side of the aisle talk about domestic terrorism, domestic terrorism, domestic terrorism, it's kind of a different type of terrorism than you and I are probably used to dealing with. Would you, uh, would you concur with that? I, from my, my experience, I'd concur with that, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sales, same question to you. What concerns you more, sir? Um, the fallout that we're seeing from our disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan and the fact that we have no southern border whatsoever and the increased encounters that you, you've been talking about over and over again and the American people are worried sick about because they know we have no southern border or this idea of domestic terrorism. Well, um, Congressman, I, I'm going to do what lawyers call fighting the hypothetical, because um, I think my answer to your question is all of the above. Um, yep. When I was at the State Department, my team and I didn't have the luxury of saying, all right, we're going to focus on this threat and this threat alone. Right. We had to address all of them, whether you're talking about ISIS, whether you're talking about Al Qaeda or other Sunni jihadis, whether you're talking about um, uh, Shia terrorist organizations backed by Iran, uh, Colombian uh, terrorist groups like the FARC and dissidents from the FARC. Um, when it comes to domestic terrorism, uh, this is a threat as well. Um, focusing on domestic terrorism, however, cannot we cannot allow that focus, which is important, to distract us from other terrorist threats. Thank you, sir. Uh, one of my colleagues uh, was basically taking up the same line of attack uh, as several of the other ones, blaming Trump for the disastrous withdrawal Again, Mr. Sales, would you concur and do you, do you agree um, with that assessment that this was uh, Trump's fault because of the deal that he made? Uh, no, Congressman, I, I wouldn't. And again, I, I'm not here to defend the deal. I'm not here to criticize the deal. Um, I, I'm only saying, my testimony is simply that the deal gave the president sufficient flexibility to make his own choices. And the president's choice was to withdraw. Yeah. Uh, my colleague, Mr. Magaziner, said that um, Biden inherited the withdrawal. Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, no, Congressman. Um, my assessment is that the President, uh, President Biden inherited a conditions-based agreement um, and was briefed by his senior military advisors um, that the United States should keep a residual force in country of 2,500 soldiers that would be capable of maintaining stability um, and applying counterterrorism pressure to Al Qaeda and ISIS. Colonel Douglas, do you agree that uh, President Biden inherited the withdrawal? He inherited a conditions-based agreement that the Taliban were not honoring and then and, and subsequently. Thank you. Dr. Schroden, what are your thoughts on that inheriting the withdrawal comment? Uh, so I would agree that the, the U.S. Taliban agreement was a conditions-based agreement and that the Taliban were not meeting the conditions of that deal. However, I would say they were, meet, they were not meeting the conditions of the deal even while President Trump was in office. And so the drawdown from 8,600 to 2,500 was also made in, you know, in sort of absence of the Taliban maintaining the conditions that they had agreed to. So in this case, I would say both parties agreed to drawdowns in absence of the Taliban meeting their conditions under the terms of the agreement. Um, my colleague over here, Ms. Uh, Titus, said she, she wants to focus on future homeland security, not reliving Afghanistan um, and not misinformation. Is there any, is there any, uh, is there a connection between f future homeland security, Mr. Sales, and what happened in Afghanistan? Should, are the two connected at all? I, I think they are, Congressman, in a number of different ways. Um, the withdrawal from Afghanistan was an enormous morale boost for our adversaries. They, they feel emboldened by our withdrawal. They feel that they um, have been vindicated for 20 years of fighting American soldiers and our allies. 
Um, I also worry, secondarily, uh, about the loss of intelligence information um, that we are no longer able to collect as robustly as was previously the case in Afghanistan. That is data that is fed into our border screening systems, biometric systems at the airports, uh, custom systems uh, to scan inbound uh, arriving international airline passengers. Th those systems have been incredibly effective at preventing another 9-11 scale attack on the homeland. They are more effective with more intel. Thank you.